Welcome to the Paint, Rest, Repeat podcast with Roz Gervais and Laura Day, where we chat about our creative lives as artists while keeping it real and a little bit messy. We're here to inspire creatives just like you to push past those boundaries and make art that you love. Let's dive in. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Paint, Rest, Repeat podcast. What's happening in your world, Laura? Are you excited about our episode today? I am because we're distilling like more information um, going from like the previous episode. That's right. That we had a chat with, yeah, together with. So in episode 40, um, we talked about how to step things up um, in your art practice so that you can build the art lifestyle that you dream of and that you desire. So if you haven't listened to that, feel free to go back and tune in to episode 40. Um, But today we're sort of deep diving into one area that we mentioned in that particular episode. And we're going to be talking about how to create a volume of work, how to find your style and how to find your identity as an artist. Um, so before we did, we dive in though, Laura and I really wanted to introduce ourselves because we are aware that sometimes we have new listeners who haven't listened to our full catalogue of um, episodes. So if this is your first time listening, my name is Roz and this is my co-host, Laura. Laura's, Laura's waving. I'm also, waving. <laughs> also, if you are listening on, on pod, in podcast land, our episodes are available over on YouTube as well. And if you're listening on YouTube or watching on YouTube, you can go and also listen to us <laughs> over on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever it is you tune in. So we started this podcast because we are passionate about inspiring creatives by having real conversations about our experiences as practicing artists. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Um. So we also wanted to do a little intro on ourselves as well, if, if it is your first time here. Um, Our podcast is growing, which is really exciting, and um, we would like to share a bit more about ourselves. Um, So my purpose for following a creative path is um, I love working with women who are on a healing journey, and I love inspiring them to use art for their own personal transformation. And I know Roz has a slightly different um, sort of mission. And did you uh, did you want to tell the listeners about really? You? Yeah, I would love to really quickly because these are these are what are called elevator pitches. And if you don't <laughs> have one, by the way, you do need to work on it. So here's my elevator pitch, and feel free to send me a DM and let me know how you rate it. Are you ready? My name is Roz Gervais and I help creative women to realise their potential and build a fulfilling art life that they love. I think that sounds pretty great to me. (laughs) I shall practice a little bit more, but um, it is good. Like on the topic of elevator pitches, it is a really good idea to have a super short sentence um, that you can share with people about your art. Yours, your, um, our listeners, their elevator pitches might not be the same as ours. Ours are more related Mm. about service to service. So yours would be more about actual art making and the Mm -hmm. type of art that you make, um, who you want to, um to collect your art for example but yeah Mm -hmm. a lot of value in that anyway that was a side note it was (laughs) (laughs) um so we're talking about developing style contemplating who you are as an artist um refining your technique um and yeah as we said before we're sort of uh digging deeper on a previous conversation on episode 40 so Go back and have a listen to that if you're interested to know what we're referring to if you haven't listened to it already. Um, So why why is it important to refine your style as an artist, Roz? Oh, to refine your style. So you want to be making art that is recognisable as 
yours. I would say that is the main reason. Um, there are, I do talk about this a lot. Um, there are also a lot of uh, sort of hangups, I suppose, and mindset blocks around that for many people who don't want to be narrowed. You know, they don't want to stop their creativity. They don't want to be boxed. They don't want to have all of those hurdles um, sort of uh, or, sorry, they have these hurdles that are stopping them from finding their style, uh, but it is important. So it's, I, I feel like it's important to work through those hurdles so that you can find your style and then build your art practice based on that style. That's my take. Yeah, I think that's that's really great. Um, yeah, that that self discovery and and really because um, there's so much information and and um, you know visual things coming into um into our lives through our phones and wherever we <laughs> get inspiration from so yeah figuring out who you are um is really important just getting like um some clarity and direction as well um yeah so um i guess we're talking about sort of uh hitting your stride as an artist building that building that confidence um sort of going from that learning phase into your real, true, authentic expression as an artist. And we're sort of talking about like the ways that you can do that. And we're sort of distilling some advice or suggestions or the formula. What would you call it? Recipe? <laughs> Recipe or the steps. I would say even in this instance for this particular episode, I feel like it's more the steps that you need to take mm. um, in order to, yeah, to get to that point where you're, where you're happy with your art and you mm. know your identity as an artist um, and you found your voice because we, we, I mean, we have had a few questions recently about what do you do with all of those online art courses um, mm. that you've got and ha you have, might have a lineup of them and you want to do them, but is that actually your voice? And, you know, mm. so this is all about finding your voice, your your style sounds like it's just aesthetic, but voice is a bit deeper than that. It includes, mm. you know, the message you want to convey through your art and the impact you want your art to have um, on the wider world. So, yeah, so I think it's really important to um, be, to find, find your, find that voice, find your identity and start to develop some confidence as well in your, your identity. And then also to um, develop some routines and things like that so you can create work um at in some sort of a volume as well mm -hmm. so yeah so yeah. who's this episode for do you think laura um so people that might want to um sell their work um commercialize their artworks they might not have made any art sales yet maybe they are just starting out um but they have a desire to sort of make a career or um sort of progress their, their art in some way, whether it's selling online or getting into galleries, getting a retailer, hosting an exhibition. Like there's so many different avenues, um, even getting into art teaching. There, there's something obviously calling their heart to this creative practice and they're wanting to dedicate themselves more, more to this uh, creative lifestyle and following that path that maybe they've seen other creative women uh, making careers out of it, making money um, from their art. So, yeah, I'd say that it's uh, aspiring artists or emerging artists, uh, even if you don't call yourself an artist yet, a creative person. Uh, what would you say, Roz? Yeah, I agree with that. So a creative person that's wanting to make more out of their art, how's that? So mm -hmm. they might they might not have another job at all, but they're wanting to make some money out of their art or maybe they're wanting to transition into art for work mm -hmm. or maybe they're just wanting to, you know, dip their toe in the water and see what might be possible um, mm -hmm. from their art. So, yeah, yeah if, the, if, the, if you resonate with any of this, um, mm -hmm. this is your episode and we'd also love to connect with you by the way so do drop us a dm over on instagram don't be shy um, we are real people and we love to support you on your journey um, and your real journey so yeah definitely drop us a little message just say hi listen to episode 42 um, it was great you should definitely tell us that definitely <laughs> 
What do you reckon, mm-hmm. Laura? Compliment, compulsory compliment. <laughs> compulsory. <laughs> compulsory compliment. Anyway, shall uh, we dive in? Yeah, I, reckon... I know we need to dive in. Um, yeah. So um, <laughs> uh, my question to you, Roz, for those I'm people. I'm a Pisces. That's the uh, answer. <laughs> <laughs> so random. Um, <laughs> so my question to you, Roz, is so for people that are wanting to turn up the dial on their um their professional practice, studio practice, um, what would you, what advice would you have? Like, um, does it, does it happen overnight? Does it, oh. does it happen immediately or, or, um, or does it take more time? Like what, what would you say to that it, person? It is a long and very rewarding journey. That is mm. what I would say. It's a mm-hmm. long and really rewarding and worthwhile journey. Um, and there are lots of bumps in that road. Um, and it is worth all the effort because if you know that's what's going to fulfill you, then it's worth mm. the effort. So mm-hmm. I think the number one step though, the number one thing if you're trying to turn up that dial um, and especially in regards to finding your style and your identity as an artist is setting that intention. So having an intention um, for your ambitions um, and for your you know for your art practice of for your art making sessions what is the intention here like broadly you know stepping back what is your big intention here what do you think you're good at intention setting yeah if people are a bit confused about that word intention um just think of it like a wish so you're being like there's a call of the heart um there's some sort of wish that you're wanting to fulfill and I think a really useful exercise for intention setting is actually doing some journaling on that um, and figuring out like why is it important to you and the purpose behind it. Um, So when writing it down, uh, you want to phrase that in a positive. So um, you like want to make space for more creative time or I really want to turn my creative practice into a profession. Yeah, uh, I really so like yeah. that. Yeah, so I will rather than I won't. Um, and, but it's also an interesting exercise to do some journaling on what you don't want in your life and what you do want. But when when you're sort of setting intentions, you want to phrase it in that that positive example of like I will, I will create twenty artworks for um, a exhibition or. I will uh, develop a a workshop and inspire other women through art, or um, I will set up my online shop. Um, yeah, what, yeah, what it, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, I'm loving that, and I'm thinking of some of the members of my art for art for the heart community who are in inquiring at the moment about art portfolios so an intention for that might Mm. be I will find um, or develop a sense of my style and my artistic voice Mm -hmm. and create my first art portfolio with 10 artworks that have the same sort of you know energy to them Mm -hmm. you know so an intention can be a specific goal I think wouldn't Mm -hmm. you say um yeah we're it not can, really talking it, about goal setting but it can, it, it can no, be yeah. it can there is some mm. sort of a crossover yeah. there it's just yeah it's your why and mm. and that that purpose behind why you're wanting to follow a creative path and if you talk if we're talking about uh figuring out who you are as an artist and developing your style um it's it's really just about creating like a a, a lot of work, isn't it? Um, but we're going to get to that style as well. Yeah, you know, sorry, yeah. interrupted. No, um, no, yeah. <laughs> creating mm-hmm. that art lifestyle and that mm-hmm. art routine, mm-hmm. um, so that you can feel confident that you you are an artist. You know, you mm-hmm. can claim that title with confidence. Yeah. So that's number one. We yeah, have a few. But... A few. We have a few mm. steps, don't we? Here. Yeah. 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 So. Um, if you're wanting to set up that practice and dedicate yourself to your art um, and you sort of want to take it to the next step and, you know, it it to become a professional practice, a professional creative practice, like we're taking things a bit more seriously at this point, um, we've labelled it um, practical prioritisation. That's it. So actually prioritising this. So once you've mm. set your intention 
obviously that means that you are prioritizing that. So you're mm-hmm. putting your art practice as a top priority um, in your life. And then you've got to then make practical steps to actually make that happen right so an intention Mm -hmm. is sort of in big goal floaty Mm -hmm. land sort of thing Mm -hmm. um and then you've got to move into the actual practical side of things so it might Mm -hmm. be like creating an art routine it might be doing some time blocking it might be having some boundaries um for yourself and also people around you um Laura talks as well often about maybe getting some babysitting for the kiddos or booking them into after school care two days a week. Uh, and there's a lot of a lot of different things like that that you do need to do um, to actually be able to take action on your intention. Um, but before um, I throw over to you, Laura, I just want to say it is really important to take these um, steps as gentle steps. Don't go setting yourself up for failure. Don't go Mm. saying that you're going to paint every single day. Um, Even, you know, even after the kids are home from school, for example, because that is just a recipe for stress. um, Mm. And it's a recipe of feeling for feeling like a failure. So let's be realistic here and make gentle steps in the the direction that you choose I was going to say in the right direction but Mm -hmm. there's no you know there's no such thing as right really I'm just saying the direction that you choose Mm -hmm. (laughs) what Um, do you reckon well yeah we're really talking about um creating new habits isn't it Mm -hmm. so it's it's about showing up um trying not to be too rigid or perfectionist about it and also not beating yourself up if you don't, um, you know, fulfill like your big aspirations. I remember when I was uh, pre- preparing my work for my solo exhibition, I'd write in my diary painting day. And, you know, you sort of think, oh, like you've got the whole day to create these amazing masterpieces. And sometimes I would just like show up for like one, one and a half hours um and I'd have my painting session and then that was it for the day and sometimes that small block of time was so much more productive than having like um like a whole you know um window open of a day to to create from so yeah I think um it's helpful if you do put the appointment in your diary um but it's also, yeah, about your prioritization over different things in your life. So maybe you could skip like binge watching TV on a Sunday morning and spend that one or two hours in your creative space, whatever that creative space looks like. And if you're um, like me and you are allergic to um, bookings in your diary, like if you if you carve out mm-hmm. time in your diary and it says mm-hmm. art practice time or studio time and that is just a turn off because you just refuse to do whatever you're told to do. Um, <laughs> you can do little things to trick yourself. So you can set alarms. I heard this great idea. You can set alarms for yourself um, with a voice message from yourself saying, go and paint now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's ways to trick yourself to actually do it. So, it, it, mm. and again, you know, we talk about, Um, helping artists to find their voice and find their identity as an artist. And that includes working out um, where you are, where you have little challenges on the pathway. Mm. So if you are like that, your job is to find um, the way to solve that problem and how are you going to make yourself do the work, you know? So So it's about like um, sort of structuring, structuring your life. And even talking to um, the people within your household or the people around you and sort of communicating to them that this is important to you. You want to spend um, so many hours uh, per week doing your creative practice. Um, It could be one or two hours or it, it could be like every evening or whatever it is, just sort of asking for help, making space. Um, figuring out those blocks of time where you're doing something um, else and sort of swapping it for your art time um, if if um, this creative practice is important to you and if following your intention to develop your portfolio or develop your style is really important, you'll make that time for yourself. And it's not easy all the time. 
Is it Ros? No, I've got a lot of problems at the moment. I'm doing everything to avoid painting, which is just Mm -hmm. ironic. And I do know that our listeners will understand, even Mm -hmm. though I love it so much, Mm -hmm. um, it is sometimes hard to show up for myself. And Mm -hmm. that's like, I think that's just a really big, um, Mm -hmm. uh, what's the word? Just a big theme for many of our listeners, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm not the only one. Um, it's but- women women in particular too because you're so giving to everyone else and um, your priority is sort of, um, you know, maybe fall down the list <laughs> yeah, um, which is, because you, yeah, you're giving to everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Then it makes me cranky with myself. But anyway, mm. um, <laughs> two things that I have tried, which have helped when I um, to put them into application. Number one is the um, Jerry Seinfeld approach, which you might've heard of, which is having a calendar and every day that you make some art or do something with your art practice, you put a cross on the calendar. And the idea mm-hmm. is that you never break your crosses. Okay, that's oh, one idea, yeah. Okay. And then the other one is that on your wall plan, if you have a wall plan, I highly recommend, by the way, mm-hmm. um, you can plot out all the art prizes you want to enter on there as well. So do do that if you're going to take your art seriously. Um, you can put on every day, every relevant day of the week, you can put the number of hours that you spent making your art. And it just mm-hmm. helps you to see mm-hmm. what you are doing. So two different approaches that might help out this yeah that's really like helpful practical advice actually I might try the crossing thing I've never mm. heard of that before yeah it's a Jerry, <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld thing apparently I've heard it mm. on multiple podcast episodes and I've okay. heard it around yeah uh, yeah never heard of it so um number three is showing up and doing the work and understanding um what motivates you so this goes, it carries on perfectly from, from this, the scheduling and um, prioritization step. Um, so um, what motivates you, Roz? Uh, so <laughs> usually for me, it's external. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do wonder if most women are like that. Um, so external. So I have a thing about number one, doing what I say I'm going to do um, as long as I can. Sometimes I do sort of, um, n- uh, sometimes I'm not always able to do that because I get excited and I overpromise things, but I do try my darndest. So yeah, doing what I say I'm going to do. So if I say to someone, I'm going to have their, I uh, have artwork to a gallery by this date, I need to do that and I will do that. So that will be my priority. Um, yeah, so other people and then values based. So it's the integrity side of things. And then uh, um, what was the other one? Oh, the other day I had a art gig, which I'm not allowed to um, share publicly yet, but I was almost certain that I had the job. I still am almost certain that I have the job and I had to create an artwork for it and I would be paid for it. So that made me turn up um, and to make the artwork, essentially a commission job. Yeah. yeah. So that was um incentive motivation. Yeah. So like yeah. what incentive do you do you have to um following through and doing the work? Wonder um, if following through, by the way, and the integrity value based thing relates to people pleasing. It could be because that's sort of like a, a social um that's a social motivator, isn't it? Oh, so, so many yeah, other dropping. people yeah other, <laughs> other people are relying on you so um mm. yeah that could come in but um back to the incentive like so that's monetary mm. but also um I thought with the incentive motivation um pleasure like so art um helps you feel relaxed and so if you're if you've got in your mind oh I really need to do my creative practice today and you get that relaxation or you it makes you feel happy it's uh really builds on your well-being then that could be um an incentive for you yeah for, what, um, what motivates you laura uh, for me um <laughs> a deadline <laughs> a deadline yes yeah, yeah. So, so you've got um, your exhibition coming up for example mm, right yeah i've got my exhibition so having that external deadline that really helps me to focus and make art. And um, I used to beat myself up about not making art all the time or not being a pro- prolific artist, uh, not having a daily practice. But I realised I'm the sort of artist that works in cycles or bursts. And that's okay. That You, you can work in different ways. Um, and 
you know, I'm still getting the work done. I'm, I still like created um, many series of beautiful artworks and um, sold lots of works from from those sort of condensed uh, blocks of creative time. Um, so yeah, I think that, you know, there are different ways of working. There are different motivations and it's um, about figuring out how you work best and not yeah knowing yourself and respecting yourself and not beating yourself up for being who you are which by the way Laura this is making me think maybe you're not best suited for the Seinfeld cross every single day maybe you're better suited for the, <laughs> yeah, don't do that to yourself that sounds yeah. like it's not going to be your jam mm, it Please could motivate me up for no, um, it upset. could motivate me in in like this um this Period. exhibition yes that's true. Planning mode. That's um, true. Yeah, because you do mm. get a little kick out of like ticking things off. Like I love writing to-do lists and <laughs> ch- checking things off. So I feel like that would be a motivator for All me. Right. Just don't make it an ongoing thing. Otherwise, next mm-hmm. episode will be <laughs> I'll be mm-hmm. counselling you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, all right. So what do we have? So we've been chatting about um, showing up, knowing your motivations. What is it mm-hmm. that motivates you? And it might be a few different categories there that we mm-hmm. shared that might be relevant to you as our listeners. Um, and then we also have showing up perhaps to build a portfolio of work. Mm-hmm. Tell me about portfolios, just for our listeners, in case they're not across it. What, what, how do you define an art portfolio, Laura? Because I have my own take on this. Um. Well, when I was um in high school, I was building a portfolio for um submission at to universities. So it's showing your like range of skills, um, and. I'd say in this instance, it might not be a range of skills and mediums and styles if if you're already set on working in a, a specific um, theme. Um, so, yeah, there's a couple of different ways that um, I'd sort of think of building a portfolio. So, so it's yeah. important to know the purpose of the mm. portfolio. Why are you creating this? So, you know, mm-hmm. in the context of many people that I chat with, um, the context would be, sorry, the purpose would be to get your art in front of galleries, for example. Mm-hmm. And in that case, and feel free to argue with me, Laura, but in that case, I would say you do want to be presenting fairly consistently. Um, you don't want to be showing them your charcoal nudes and your... Mm-hmm. <laughs> your, your <laughs> or your um, moody landscapes in oils because that's just confusing. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you are putting a portfolio together to go to some sort of a um, university or something like that, it might be a different different situation. Yeah, Mm. I definitely say that. But I think what we're talking about in this episode of the podcast is really digging in, developing your style, creating a volume of work that has like a similar thread or a conversation running um, through it and really diving deeper into that technique and really exploring um, all your, your different marks and what you enjoy and what you're in, inspired by um, and the materials you enjoy working with and um, maybe figuring out who you are um, within the art world, within the um, like how you would describe your work and um, what other artists from history or art movements that you're drawn to and draw influence from in your um, in your professional practice. Um, and I've actually created um, a guide which would be kind of helpful. It's called Crafting Your Artist Statement and it's all about like that self-discovery. There's lots of prompts and um, sort of things that you might want to sort of think about and consider and sort of dive deeper when you're talking about your artwork and that might help inform your actual um, like practical practice, like painting practice or 
um, whatever you're working on. So you can go and get that over on Laura's website at laurajaneday.com stroke free. Is that right, Mm -hmm. Laura? That's Um, correct. But also feel like this is a good time to drop in this little side note, um, which we really wanted to flag today, which was, Mm. is that um, we're not looking at any of this finding your style and finding your influences and working out, you know, what materials are your main um, sort of inspiration um, from a perfectionist angle Mm -hmm. okay so all of this is um evolving and should be in my opinion Laura you can debate with me again but in my opinion it should be forever forever evolving because we are growing humans um forevermore and if you look back at all the greats their artworks evolved as well and their styles evolved um and that should be happening for you as well so when you go and grab Laura's crafting your artist statement download um which is free over on her website don't be looking at that like you have to get it right it has to be absolutely perfect it's just going to be a starting point and then you can revisit it I'm sure um, a little bit down the track and revise and then revisit and revise and revisit and revise so that it is relevant to the current you as an artist yeah yeah Rant I'd over. say I know <laughs> I, I definitely agree yeah I this is a fluid process and we are um, we're different people in different phases in our lives. Like we change. What is it? Our cells um, recycle and regenerate every seven years. Like we're evolving human beings. Um, our interests um, and our life circumstances change. So there's different seasons in our life, and I think that can be reflected in our art practice as well um yeah so that rigid mindset of like I'm stuck in this this box like um don't think that you have to like have it all figured out and you know really like stay in a certain lane um keep it open and like explore the things that you're interested in um but if the purpose is to approach a gallery or have a series of work that um, you want to have represented or apply for art prizes um, or you want to become known for a certain style, then that's what we're sort of talking about um, in relation to, to this development of style. And if you do want to go and watch my free masterclass on how to find your unique art style, you can go and do that. It's a video um, masterclass with me and it's a recording and I take you through how you can look at your art to date, how you can locate your style um, and then what you can do with it once you've found it. So that's over at my website, www.permissiontopaint.co stroke style and it's completely free um, and I would absolutely love to help you to find your style without sacrificing your creativity and without being boxed and without Mm. being limited because there is a way to overcome all of those hurdles yeah so this is sort of the stage where you're playing creating learning discovering who you are um yeah so it's a fun phase but from the learning we sort of have to like put it um put it into practice too And I feel like some people can get stuck in that perpetual learning um, and get gaining information and more and more information Mm -hmm. and then not in like the nitty gritty of like figuring, figuring that out. So um, we sort of the next stage is um, sort of the reflection stage. Um, Did you want to cover that part, Roz? Yeah, definitely. So um so we've just mentioned that it's important to reflect um, you might do some journaling you might talk with your believing mirrors as well just to you know sort of take that step back and look at your art to date look at your art practice um, and to reflect on what you're trying to say through your art and just to really sort of Uh, develop a sense of who you are as an artist on a deeper sort of more emotional and sort of purposed purpose level really Um, and this is when you might develop your artist cv your artist bio you might do that the artist statement guide from laura um, and develop an understanding of your identity which remember will evolve but it's really important to take this time to think about that and it, it it and this again you know may may take time another little side note here um as well before my brain forgets um is that 
a lot of people that might be listening will be thinking, might be thinking um, that they can't share their art on Instagram or on to, to with anybody until they have found their style, found their voice, found their identity, feel confident calling themselves an artist publicly. What would you say about that one, Laura? No, I'd say share the process. Yeah, mm-hmm. share the journey. I think um, it's a really great way uh, to get feedback and um and when uh, some people can reflect really interesting things and responses back um about your art too so um taking that brave pill putting it out there and um putting it out there maybe when it's not finished putting it out there when you've only done your underpainting layer um i think it's really interesting and you know you can create a following that way as well um but also um yeah that that feedback and the comments will really help especially if you like don't have um a physical active like artist community around you um and also like if you're a self taught artist um that may not have gone uh, to art school um you might not be like sort of um, aware of like, you know, when we're in art school, we have our peers and our tutors um, in critique. So we'd um, exhibit our work when the work was due and we'd talk about the art. And sometimes that would be um, really helpful because you would get um, different people's responses back um, of like how they felt about your artwork. And um, it can um, be really helpful to get people's feedback and surround yourself with other people that can <clears throat> sort of <laughs> um, feed back to you. Sorry. <laughs> um, I just coughed in the middle of that, everybody. Our, a lovely <laughs> editor might edit that out. I'm not sure, but never mind. Um, yes, no, that is a very good point. And I think, um, what was I thinking about this whole Instagram sharing business? You want people to come on the journey with you. And I also want to say, um, In all of my Instagram, like, years, I don't know how many years it's been, three, four, something like that, I have literally not once received a negative comment. Yeah, same. Oh, yeah, in relation to my art, um, yeah, no, it's all been, like, lovely and positive and um, I think that's other artists follow other artists on Instagram and um we're all out there with the same like purpose and mission just to put put our um creativity out there so it can actually be very rewarding and fulfilling to become a part of that um yeah and so, it, it, yeah. I, I think the public is nicer than you think they are I guess mm. is what, I guess I remember being very nervous that mm-hmm. feedback might come back and mm-hmm. it might be a bit mean and the blah, mm-hmm. blah, 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 but never have I or you experienced that so yeah no. do it anyway chuck a mm-hmm. Nike do it anyway um <laughs> just do it um so we did want to share that's the that's the last of our sort of pointers um mm-hmm. for for developing your sort of art practice and style and identity but we did want to share um the key takeaway that we want you to have from this particular podcast episode um, which is the importance of having a really clear vision and knowing your direction um, as an artist so your success is actually all about your intention and then your commitment to that intention so you can take the slow route to get where you want to go or you can take the fast lane it doesn't actually matter Um, but knowing your direction your goals and showing up so you actually do the beautiful art making work um, is what will give you that traction that you're after Um, so yeah intention setting is the number one step Laura Mm -hmm. yeah and just um gaining that clarity um so yeah i guess you know there's things that could come up along the way especially in terms of your mindset um but yeah just being gentle with yourself like it's not um a rush in that personal discovery phase um it takes time um so yeah showing up is the most important bit isn't it yeah, like and showing sharing, up for yourself. 
And I feel like the sharing while you're on the journey is also Mm. a key part because if you can manage to do that, it means that you're not stuck in that perfectionist space. Mm -hmm. So I would actually prioritize that one as well. Um, So throughout the episode today, Laura and I also dropped um, a couple of free downloads. So if you didn't manage to cap, catch those um, URLs. I'll quickly share them again because we feel like this would really help you out. Um, So Laura has her guide on crafting your artist statement, which is over on her website at www.laurajaneday.com stroke free. And then I have my style masterclass, how to find your unique art style over at www.permissiontopaint.co stroke style. And the reason Laura, I'm reading this out is that did you know only 1% of podcast listeners read the show notes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Well, there you go. There um, you go. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's easier for you to get the clickable link, then go into the show notes <laughs> and find us there. But, yeah, thank you. I appreciate you reading that out, Ross. <laughs> That's all right. So thank you everyone for today for listening. Um, if there's anything that we didn't cover today for some reason, or you have some questions on what we've touched on, please let us know um, by dropping us a DM over on Instagram, which is where we both love to hang out. Um, and that way we can cover it in a future episode. Um, reviews. Oh, I haven't logged in to check reviews this week, Laura. Shall we leave it to the next one? All right. All right. Should we encourage people to leave a new review? Yes, we should encourage people (laughs) to leave a new review. We love hearing your feedback and um, it um, gives us a confidence boost and we know that we're going on the right path. Um, So (laughs) definitely let us know how you're finding the episode, if you found it useful. And like Roz said before, um, any feedback and questions uh, we would love to hear as well. So for a review, you can either leave a written review over on Apple Podcasts um, or you can leave us five stars on Spotify um, and that just helps us also to reach other artists and help them on their journey. So that would be amazing. If you would be willing to do that, we would be forever grateful. Oh, also we do like to read out your Instagram handle and give you a bit of a shout out as well. So if you do leave us some feedback, um, make sure you remember to leave your Instagram handle in the comment um, where you leave the review so we can shout you out and then hopefully get you a couple of extra followers good tip yay all right (laughs) catch you next time bye bye